Today's lesson is going to be the understanding of depth maps and how to produce them within Maya. Now, you're going to need something. A lot of rest, some relaxation, and some kind of snack probably because this is a very long, tedious process. But, it, you will understand the complex node structure within Maya Hypershade after this is done. So, this is a depth map. okay? Minus this big black bar at the top because I didn't fill it with a... Uh, big enough square, but that's easy to fix. But the idea here is everything white is up front, and everything a very light gray is in the very back, and in the middle field there, everything is in perfect clarity. Now, for those that do not understand what a depth map is, uh, you use these in within post-composition to make things clearer and blurrier in the background. So, the level of detail very, very close to the camera. Not so much detail. Mid-ground, perfect detail. And far enough off into the background, you get less and less detail. Okay. For those that uh, know ZBrush, I will show you how to take this a little bit further. So you can use Maya to make alphas. And let me kind of go into that just for a second. Let me kind of switch a route this around. So the out color here is going to the vector coordinated. And then instead of this one being here and this, this now becomes true. Okay, then that's just a preview of what we're going to be understanding here is how to recreate this node structure. So you got plus and minuses, you got times something, you got ramps, you got clamps, you got settings, you got linear gradients, all kinds of craziness. So what will happen now, if, if you want to produce something, let's say for ZBrush, ZBrush only understands one thing. Uh, it understands depth, but not so far back. Okay, so let's say I was wanting to make an alpha of this. I could do that just by hitting render, and I got this set up for 2048 by 2048. Okay, I can go in here and make it so it centered. I can hit one to one. And then file, or file, save image, go to my desktop and save this as PSD. Now this is a very, very lame example of an alpha, but you, you get to see exactly what an alpha does within ZBrush. Because alphas are our friends. They are the brushes that we use every day. So if we import this newly created alpha that is on the desktop, we can turn it into a brush or many other things. But a brush is just a small example of what we can do with it. Whoops. Let's see what we got here. 1.5 million poly should support it. And let's do a drag wreck. There we go. As I said, pretty lame example of an alpha, but um, yeah, it does require depth. Cool for Star Trek symbols, I guess, or whatever. And I can also set the camera focus to be so that it wraps around it a little bit better. It all depends what uh, sort of lens you use on your camera within Maya to get that, that distortion. So that's pretty cool. You can also do a nice little uh, crop and fill. And then you got this depth. Okay. All right, so now that you've seen the alpha creation and this node, let's get started on the whole making of it process. And this is going to take probably roughly, you know, seven to eight videos to get the understanding of of it and it'll be fun. So on to the next video.